Hi everyone, okay so I've been asked to do a video regarding more extreme piercings, what kind of ones go a little bit more like against like the grain, sort of a little bit more different than most other people get, would I get any and all that kind of stuff. So today I'm going to be talking about some of the most extreme piercings and body modifications. Quickly though, just before I do start, if you are new to my channel make sure you do subscribe because I do videos every single week regarding a whole variety of topics and yeah I'm almost on 75,000 so let's make it happen, yes me age. So to start off the list, I'm, oh my gosh, I want this so bad. It is tongue splitting. I cannot tell you how much I want to have my tongue split. I've wanted it for such a long time, but I just don't know if I'm actually able to. I can't even get my tongue pierced because apparently the blood vessels are too big. So I really highly doubt that I could probably get it split because it's like, well, if I can't get it pierced, how am I gonna get it split? What a tongue splitting is, where basically they use either a scalpel or a cauterizer and basically they cut uh, down the middle of your tongue split it in half. If they do use a scalpel, they do then sew up each like end of the tongue split to make sure that it doesn't heal back together. Although it can still heal back together when you wake up in the mornings and stuff. So you do kind of have to like keep pulling it apart to make sure that it doesn't actually seal itself back up. If they do use a cauterizer, because obviously it's like such a hot bit of iron, or like metal, I'm not sure what the, the thing will be, but because it's such a hot piece of like material, it like cauterizes the veins and stuff. So like it doesn't like bleed as much. I would love this so, so much. Like I actually really want my tongue split, but I don't know whether I can. Also like, like it's one of those modifications where you really have to be careful who you go to. You have to make sure that you go to a licensed professional, like an actual surgeon or someone to do this and not just like, a, you know, your generic body piercer who might not know what to do. So just obviously be very careful when you do get this. Now the next on the list is ear pointing. Now this obviously gets um, referred to as kind of like elf ears. I think this looks so, so cute. And I would, this is actually something that I could potentially think about maybe getting done, but it's just like, you don't actually know completely how it was going to heal because everyone's body heals different so basically what they do is they remove like a little chunk of your cartilage here in the top of your ear and then sew it back on together and then obviously like they make it more like a point so you remove like a little bit of a, like a like a triangle and then sew the two things together and when it heals it kind of like makes like a point there's some ways when you sew it back together you can make yourself look a bit more hooded and there's other ways where you can look a bit more open I prefer the open look with a bit of a point rather than the, the whole thing looking slightly hooded obviously with these kind of modifications they are irreversible once you do remove that piece of cartilage you are not going to grow that back. So that's something that you definitely have to take into consideration if you ever get one of these more extreme body modifications, that it is permanent. But I think ear pointing and elf ears like look so, so cute. I think it looks so nice. Also, like if I get like that kind of done, I'd have to remove some of my piercings and I really don't want to do that. So I think for now, I'd stick with what I've got. <laughs> so third on the list is eyelid piercings. <sighs> I thought, okay, so I remember seeing pictures like this years ago and I thought it wasn't real. I thought people were just photoshopping stuff, but it's actually a thing that some people get done. Now, I'm not gonna pass judgment on them in but like, it was them, they can do what they want. But it's, this is more so like, why would you put yourself through that? Like, I don't understand why you would put those, like, you could go like, that would must damage your eye. Like there's no way you can have a piece of metal on the edge of your eye and it not damage your eye. Like I don't get how that wouldn't just be completely irritable. If anyone watching this has an eyelid piercing, first of all, why? <laughs> Second of all, like, please, please tell me your experience. Like I, I will say, I don't know how many people, like how common this is, but seriously, like to me, it's too much of a risk. I feel like it'd be too much of a risk and you might go blind. Like when you blink, it would scratch your eye. Like I just, and if it got like infected and then the infection went into your eye, like to me, it just seems completely, just insane. So next on the list is dermal punches. This is actually the first modification that is an extreme modification that I do have. So dermal punches normally get done in ear cartilage. You can obviously get it in your nose cartilage, but I'm gonna be talking about that on the next one. Dermal punches is like a cylindrical kind of like, it's not like a needle as such, cause it like goes on like an end. This is like what the needle sort of punch thing looks like. So it's not like a long needle. It's like quite a short, like stumpy thing. I actually have one here. This is a six millimeter um, conch dermal punch that I have had done. I've had it for about three weeks now and it's healing really, really well. It looks absolutely, like I love it so much. So what they do is they get like the dermal punch and they push it through the ear or like wherever you're getting it done and it removes a large piece of tissue. And then obviously then you put a plug in it or like a, a tape or like not a taper, but just something in it that like obviously keeps the hole open. These kind of modifications are definitely ones that you have to think about because again they're irreversible once you get this done there is no way of growing your cartilage back I obviously had to take that consideration when I got my dermal punch here I absolutely love it though I've wanted this for such a long time and I'm so glad that I finally got a piercing that's kind of like 
a permanent one. Like when I think about the fact that it's permanent now, I'm kind of I get really excited. I cannot wait for mine to actually heal so I can put like a like a like a hole in it so you can actually see all the way through my ear. One or two risks when it does come to these kind of piercings is if you put like a sillet, like a hole in it and uh, like a tunnel, you can lose a slight, slight part of your hearing because obviously your ears act like a canal for sound. As the sound comes towards you, it goes obviously round in your ear and then to your eardrum. But if you've got a hole there, you've got nothing, like it kind of, the sound will go right through. So like sometimes you can lose a tiny bit of your hearing. A piercer that I did go to once, um, she said to me that she can't, she's got it done herself and she can't sleep on that side. I have found it fine to sleep on my left side, although I've got it here. So I think that's just down to your own personal like way of sleeping, whatever. But I can still sleep on the side and be perfectly fine. The next one is staying on the same topic and it's nose stretching. Again, some people do like to stretch their nostrils. I personally would never stretch my nostrils. Like my nose is quite big already, so I don't really, you want to stretch it. Also, people do do it on their septum as well. I've been asked quite a few times would I ever like size up my septums like a larger gauge. I personally don't want to. I have to admit, some people do have it and it looks absolutely awesome. Like when they have like a thicker jewelry here that comes down like over their nose, I think that looks so, so good. Also, if you have like your nostrils stretched here and it's very large, you can obviously see inside your nose. And to me, that would freak me out a little bit too much if I could see it. I know obviously a lot of people would probably just have plugs in them, but for me, I, I just think it would freak me out being able to see into my nasal cavity. Like, it would just scare me a little bit. So I don't think I could ever get that done. I'd be too freaked out. And obviously it's another one of those things that like, you know, once you've stretched it or like punched it, you will not grow that back. So you just have to take that into consideration. So next on the list is subdermal implants. I think these look so, so good. So basically what they are is mainly, they're mainly made out of silicone. They're like a silicone shape where they slice a bit of your skin. They put the subdermal implant underneath it and then seal up with the skin that they've cut it and it sort of sits underneath your skin and it makes it raised a bit so you can get lots of different shapes like lots of different shapes and sizes and everything a lot of people that I've seen and I think looks really cool get horns put onto their forehead here like I think that looks so good you just have to remember that a lot of people are going to look at that and go that is terrifying it's going to the stage now of, of piercings and modifications where it's going outside the kind of what society is almost accepting in like modification world and it goes past that to the stage where like it's just, you look a bit crazy. To like the general public, people will see you and if you've got horns or something, they'll just be like, you're mad. I think one of the main risks when it comes to these kind of modifications is a lot of people do it and not know who they're going to. Like again, this is something that like, you're opening up a massive hole in your body to put like a piece of jewelry in or to put like um, a like silicone implant inside. So if you're not in a really sterile environment, you can get infections really easily. So the next one I did actually talk about in my piercings I would never get video and it's Nazalang piercings. The reason I'm putting this in this list again is because it is a quite an extreme modification because of where it is. So basically, people who don't know, it is a piercing needle that goes through here, goes all the way inside the cartilage and the like the piece inside like the really hard bit in the nose and then comes out the other side and it sits like flat inside their nose and oh my gosh and you couldn't pay me to get this done it would be so so painful i've seen videos online on youtube of people getting this done and literally they look like they're about to die from the pain like it's to that level of extremeness that like i just i physically couldn't do it also you know i think about these piercings because you need to do it with such force and such like it's such a difficult one to go into your nose that a lot of the time it never is dead straight. A lot of the time it's at an ever so slight angle either side and it would, if I was to ever get that done and it would be slightly off centre or like slightly curved or slightly bent, I would freak out because I'd be like, I'd be like I've gone through all of that pain and it doesn't look right. So for the last one on this list is nipple and belly button removal. Now, this is obviously one of those uh, things that you don't normally hear about, but some people do like to get their nipples removed and also their belly buttons removed. You can make it so your belly button is completely flat so you don't actually have like a belly button there. And you can also get your nipples removed. So basically they remove their nipples so like you kind of look like your chest is like, flat and not like has the, well, doesn't have the nipple on. Again, I don't like understand why necessarily people would want to get this done. I, I, I mean, I've never known anyone to get it done. Um, if anyone has got this kind of modification, please comment down below your experience with it and why you got it done and what made you want to get it done. Um, I'm very interested to find out actually what would make you want to go, oh, my nipple's taken off. A lot of the risks with this kind of thing just comes from people going to people who don't actually have the qualifications to perform these procedures and they shouldn't really be performed by just, you know, your generic piercer who works at Blue Banana. And I'm not sure about the legality in some of these uh, modifications when it comes to amputation. Um, I know it can be a little bit of a 
the gray area, whether like you're really allowed to go and do stuff like that. So there are some modifications that are a little bit more extreme that maybe I want, maybe I don't, and maybe I'm sure about some of them. Um, if there's any other topics you would like me to talk about regarding piercings and modification, please comment down below and let me know and I can do that in the next video. If you're not new to my channel, again, make sure you subscribe because I do videos every single week. Please hit the like button because that's really help me out and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!